Hello, and welcome back to the Talos Principle. We've reached the second ending out of maybe two. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure if the white pieces will lead to a new ending or or what. I think someone mentioned there were like three endings, but I, I don't didn't get any confirmation if like... I mean, you haven't seen the episode yet, but any confirmation if the like cat thing is because of the cat easter egg and if that counts as a different ending, the like cat ending versus non-cat ending. I assume it's just the exact same ending, just you don't hear a cat meow and you don't carry the cat in your hands and that kind of thing. Maybe that's just the default ending. What do I know? I would have to get to the ending without having done the cat thing, which means I have to do the entirety of the C hub and like half of the, the B hub again. That's not happening, if that's a thing. Unless it's like an achievement and we can do it in a second playthrough, I don't know. But anyway, we have our last star level to do, and actually I did realize there's something very important that I'm forgetting that we, I'm like contractually obligated to do before we start Road to Gehenna. We need to have a Sea Hub Out of Bounds showcase. So I've been kind of going in, refreshing my memory on those. I still need more time because holy crap, there's a lot of levels and a lot of things to, to go through. So I'm kind of hoping that this area will last at least two episodes, and I think the others have as well. Like, we have we have one episode where we check it out and maybe read some stuff. There's probably a terminal and maybe some QR codes, and maybe we can get started today, and then we'll probably finish up in one more. Maybe? Maybe there's going to be more. I don't know. We'll see how extensive this one is compared to the other two. It's loading for a long time. Ooh. Ooh, this is cool. Hello. This is a very interesting visual, at least. Yeah, nice. When I first saw it, I thought this would not even be anything. I thought it would just, like, drop off into water or something and you would die if you jumped in. But, yeah, this looks really cool. I like all of the uh, distinct areas. It's a weird seam. Yeah, okay, well, let's get started on the reading. Why does it say two? Oh, this is the code. Yeah, like I mentioned last time. I I don't think I even realized in the other two. I I don't know what I was thinking. I saw these in both of the other two areas, and I I don't know. I just didn't have any thoughts about them. I processed it and didn't think. Yeah. So the last digit is eight. So we have to go go back and check those other two. And then we get the code, which I guess you, you input from floor 4 to unlock floor 6. Okay, well, that's good. Now I know how to get to the white Tetris door, because that was kind of a, a big question that I wasn't too sure about. All right. Uh, should I just, like... It... it mm. Okay, fine. Might as well just do that. If I uh, just take a screenshot... Actually, no. Yeah. If I just take a screenshot, it's fine. If I, if I want a no HUD screenshot, then I have to, like... I don't even remember why I, like, for some reason I have to do this to screenshot, because I think if I screenshot normally, then it opens the console. Yeah, it opens the console on my screenshot key. Oh, well. Yeah, here we go. Human eye to Tromino. Hmm, okay. Preservation. And six something N. Oh, have these said, like, has there been another one in the previous one that said, like, star... I star, and then the first one was like P star star or something, so it's like six floor pin or something. Well, here it just says six. Let's check the image first. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I guess that's just... We really didn't need that as a, a clue, but sure. Okay. So yeah, I think it's, it's like six pin. All right, well, human eye. What? What is a man? But a machine for little creatures? Oh boy. What is a man's eye but a machine for the little creature that sits behind in his brain to look through? Samuel Butler. Some hexadecimal. Is it man's eyes or is it the big seeing, seeing engine which has revealed to us the existence of worlds beyond worlds into infinity? What has made man familiar with the scenery of the moon, the spots of the sun, or the geography of the planets? He is at the mercy of the seeing engine for these things, and is powerless until he tacks it on to his own identity and make it part and 
Huh? And make it part and parcel of himself. Okay, I don't exactly understand all of that, but okay. Let me do some hexadecimal stuff. And here it is. Everything would appear to man as it is. Okay, well, I mean, that seems to relate to exactly what we're, we're saying. What we're saying here, or what he's saying here. Okay, great. Tetromino. One of the most fascinating aspects of Saint e Eadwald. I don't know how you pronounce that. Eadwald's recent, recently uncovered writings is his preoccupation with finding divine truth in mathematical concepts, which at times borders on pantheism. He was, it would seem, particularly concerned with what we now call tetrominoes, seeing in them a reflection of the te tetra... tetragrammaton? Of the Greek word for god, theos. Tetrominoes? I mean, really? Their ability to form other shapes out of themselves symbolized to him the creator's ability to... Reshape the world without breaking the loss he himself had established. Eadwald referred to Tetrominoes as sigilla, sigils, implying that they were a more truthful version of the magical symbols worshipped by heathens, rooted in both the Abrahamic tradition and careful observation of creation. It is unlikely that these texts were distributed, as they would almost certainly have resulted in charges of heresy. So, well, I guess there you, there you go. That's kind of like the reason why they did use tetrominoes as the sigil locks, and why they're called sigil locks and sigil keys and sigils. Yeah, pretty neat little thing, but I mean, we don't know if there's any like basis to this, but I guess it's just a neat little nod to that. And then preservation. I viewed with a mixture of pity and horror these beings training to be sold to slaughter or be slaughtered and fell into reflections on an old opinion of mine, that it is the preservation of the species, not of individuals, which appears to be the design of the deity throughout the whole of nature. Blossoms come forth only to be blighted, fish lay their spawn where it will be devoured, and what a large portion of the human race are born, uh, merely to be swept prematurely away. And then we have some more hexadecimal. Does not this waste of budding life empathetically assert that it is not men, but man, whose preservation is so necessary to the completion of the grand plan of the universe. Children peep into existence, suffer and die. Men play like moths about a candle and sink into the flame. War and the thousand ills which flesh is heir to mow them down in shoals, whilst the more cruel prejudices of society palsy... Society palsy existence? Introducing not less sure though slower decay. Yeah, that was a hard sentence to understand. I guess that's if you think all of these things are, like, as they should be, and not a sort of challenge for our species to overcome, I guess. Like, maybe we can beat suffering and hunger and sickness and even old age and things like that, just not individually or whatever. I don't know. Obviously, that's... Not such a a perfect future in and of itself, but, you know, you could see it in many different ways. All right, once again, hexadecimal time. All right, here we are again. Uh, this is a bit wonky. I think this last part shouldn't even be here. These are just, like, weird characters, but I'm not sure why this is here. I tried removing other parts, and I don't know which, what if I made a mistake or something. But yeah, life is more than a dream. Sure. Okay. There we go. That's that's it. Possibly the last terminal that we'll read? Maybe not. There might be one in the, the White Tetris area. There probably will be, let's be honest. Yeah, we'll see. But there we are. And yeah, like I thought, we haven't even like explored this area, and that's still that's already quite a decent chunk of this episode. So let's just sightsee a little bit. See if we can find some hidden Easter eggs or QR codes or something. Yep, sure, sure can. Yeah, just the one. Boxes and connectors. Let's check what these are called. Nexus. 
Uriel 4. Hmm. My faith has taken me to this secret place. Here I hope to discover a way of better serving others. I guess he did. Uriel 4 has done quite a lot. Unfortunately, no hack trick of uh, scanning QR codes and having them say other things. That one checked out. Should be a paint bucket here somewhere as well, I imagine. And that's it. Really, only one single QR code outside of the levels. It's kind of surprising. And yeah, this one is pretty much everything. Boxes, recording, uh, platforms. Ooh, platform again. Yeah, we haven't used that much. Maybe there's going to be a more difficult platforming platform level. And connectors. Unreachable garden. And let's just check. Did I check under here? I did, right? Just in case. Yeah, okay. And then this, this part... This one looks a bit simpler. Boxes and connectors. This one was also boxes and connectors, right? Cobweb. Well, uh, yeah, we have some times. I guess let's get started on this one. We'll start with cobweb. The big old central one. I'm tempted to see if we can uh, out of bounds in here at some point. And there it is. We did have boxes here, so that immediately makes me think we can probably break out in some way. Boxes are very... Hello, where are you? Have we seen this statue before? I don't recognize this. Yeah, we have a bunch of connectors. Oh, wait. Hmm. Might need to, like... We can get through here, I think, but... I guess, hold on. I guess you're supposed to do it, like, one side at a time. So if we start with this side, we just place it here, so that this guy doesn't break the thing. And then we just place this one, like, here. And then he shouldn't break it, right? Or does he? Wait, what just broke it? This guy in here? Yeah, that guy still breaks it. I, I guess we can just take it all the way over here instead. Does he still break it? Yeah, he still breaks it. I mean, not that that matters. We can just walk in. But I, I think at some point we kind of need to... I mean, we could just try and, like, hook everything up again. Maybe this will cause them to, like, always stay open in some way. I don't know. Well, let's just get in here, I suppose. We get another connector. And that's just it. That's the end here. I guess we're creating a cobweb of lasers. And can we just go in here as well? This does open up eventually, does it? Yeah, it does. And there we get the box and another connector. So the box, we can probably do stuff with. Ah, damn. Hold on. It'll, it'll work eventually. Right? Why is it like not working at all at this point? Oh, because... is he? Oh, whoops. Okay, I was ruining it. Yeah, now it'll work. There we go. What the... Come on. 
Okay. We have everything out here. Now, why do we need a box in the first place? As always, might not even be able to solve this one today. We'll, we'll see. We'll just look around. Ah, uh, we can't, like, jump up on the statue, can we? Stand on his, like, pallet. No, guess not. Yeah, there's kind of no... No good debris in this level, so... We might be out of luck for that. And then in here, there's nothing. Yeah, so, okay, I guess we just have four connectors and we somehow need to, like... Hmm, I guess the box is for elevation on one of them. To take it over, yeah, like... This needs to go all the way in here and hook up to that. And we need to have a box in here. Ah, uh, I wonder if that'll also prevent this guy from blocking it. Hmm. Yeah, this one is like a simple concept, but seems kind of tricky to execute. Oh, I already had this here. I mean, we can have two of these on either side, right? Well, not not quite. I guess we don't want them here. Like, this one we would actually want, like, over here or something. And then this one there. So then, like, no matter what's being blocked, there's always something going to one of them. Ah, this doesn't go to this one, though, at this point. Could we do that somehow? Not really. Uh, we could do... Move this one... To the same position, just here. Like that. And then we take the third one... And just set it up here in the middle. So we would want to disconnect this, probably. Just like that kind of thing. So let's do this again, so we don't connect these two up. Uh, no, these are f mm, no, no, we don't want these connected up, so just... Just that, I guess? Ow, 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 don't kill me. So what happens now? Yeah, no, this doesn't seem to work. We could move this one back even further. Don't don't want it on there. I mean, it's held open for a split second. Don't think that split second is long enough, though. Damn it. Can't imagine this is... Long enough, no. And that even gets blocked anyway. Hmm. Yeah, so this guy's a problem too. Huh. So, what else could we do, then? We can't quite have, like, this guy stand in the way of this one. 
That doesn't work. We could connect this up here instead, instead of this one. I mean, I guess both. Oh yeah, and then it could stand in the way, right? But it's still gonna get disconnected. Hmm. Yeah, I would want that to reach here. Yeah, this part is kind of pointless. And we, we do only have three connectors to make use of here, because we do definitely need one to be red. Possibly even more than that. Yeah, it's just being blocked again and again. How do we prevent these from, like, blocking everything? And I think this needs to be in view of this one. But then these will get blocked, right? Or does that not? Yeah, that still breaks. Damn it. Why does that break so often? Maybe we reverse this and have this one actually be like close? Like right here? And then we move these. No, that's not going to work. It would have to at least be, like, here in the center. Somewhere like that. But now it's blocking itself. These are blocking each other, so yeah, that, that doesn't really work. Unless we, again, move these over here, then. I don't think this will remain stable. Will it? Wait. Somehow this one doesn't get blocked. But this one does. Why? Oh! Now it stabilized. And I don't exactly know why. No, it did not. What? Why is this one, like, breaking at times? Oh, yeah, okay. They need to be a little... A oh, little more separated. Like, just a little bit. So that it only blocks one at a time. There we go. Why does this one work much better? Like, this this angle is wider, I think, than this angle. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe the tree is in the way? But, I mean, now it's held open. I think I heard the final gate open. Yeah, okay, well, I mean, I guess that's fine then. It does open for long enough that I can go in and take it. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I guess I'll call that solved. I don't know if there's a, an, a more elegant solution where, like, everything is completely stable in equilibrium and you, you don't have to, like, race in here. But, I mean, this doesn't seem unintended. You have a good, like, five seconds to go in and grab the thing, and they've done that in the past. So, I guess I'll say job well done. That's, that's cobweb. Pretty tricky, but, I mean... It was mostly just trial and error, just move around the connectors until a configuration just happens to work and nothing breaks, like, the, the connection at the same time. So, 
not really too much of a puzzle, honestly. Like I said, very like simple to understand concept. You understand what you're trying to do, but just doing it is not very clear, like how to do it and where to place these and stuff. But there we go. Cool. All right. I guess I'll leave it off there. And then next time we'll check out those other two levels. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you then. Bye-bye.